Mr. Speaker, uh, Saturday is Emancipation Day in the District of Columbia. It marks the day, April 16, 1862, uh, when 3,100 slaves in the District of Columbia led the, way, led the way to freedom, securing their freedom nine months before the Emancipation Proclamation freed slaves nationwide. Isn't it ironic that because Emancipation Day comes on a Saturday, you're going to have three extra days to file your income taxes, even though it's not a national holiday. It's a very special day for those of us who live in the District of Columbia because we're trying to get our full rights, the same rights that every other American has here in the nation's capital, uh, where we live surrounded by people who come to the floor to vote. While our voting committee representing the people of the District of Columbia, I cannot vote on this floor. Others can vote on this floor on matters affecting my jurisdiction and my jurisdiction only. And yet, the district has more residents than uh, other states. And as many residents as about seven states in the United States. But we outnumber Vermont and Wyoming. And there you see the district, Vermont and Wyoming. Yet Vermont and Wyoming and every other state in the United States has two senators and at least one representative. About seven states have one representative uh, who vote on this House floor. I do not vote on this House floor. The people I represent have earned every single right that every other American has. Here are D.C.'s casualties in the major 20th century wars where uh, the District of Columbia outpaced many states in casualties during those wars. World War I, uh, more casualties than three states. Uh, World War II, more casualties than four states. The Korean War, more casualties than eight states. And the Vietnam War, more casualties than 10 states. American citizens who went to war for their country died without a vote, did not come home, and their relatives today still do not have the vote on this House floor and no vote in the Senate of the United States. The largest irony of all, however, is shown on this chart. The people I represent here in the nation's capital pay more taxes per capita, more than any other residents of any state in the United States. Uh, highest taxes, 12,000 per person. And there are almost 700,000 people here. The lowest taxes in, in the United States per capita turns out to be Mississippi. But wherever you come from, uh, you who are American citizens the way we are, pay fewer taxes, less in taxes than the people who live in your nation's capital even though the people who live in your nation's capital are some of, live in a city that is among the oldest American cities and still do not have their rights. This is in violation of a treaty we have signed in 1977, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights, uh, found, and we have been found to be in violation of that treaty because we do not give the residents of the District of Columbia the same rights as we give other Americans. We are the only capital city in the world where those who live in their capital city do not have the same rights as others. And yet, as you saw, we have given, as you saw by the casualties uh, that, that, that our city has had, uh, it has given, we have given and then given. The district wants to become the 51st state of the United States of America. That is the only way in which we can keep the Congress from interfering with our own, with our local affairs. We have to bring our own local budget. We raised seven billion dollars in the District of Columbia. It has to come here for the Congress to sign off on uh, so that we can spend our own money. What kind of autocracy do we live in? And of course, what is most frustrating to us is that most Americans think 
that we who live in your nation's capital have the same rights as every other American. After all, they see me on the House floor. They see me vote in committee. Uh, the greatest frustration, of course, to us is that most Americans do not know not have the same rights as they, and they would not countenance for a moment that there are any Americans who are treated as lesser sin. Gentlewoman's time is expired.